If our low primary voter turnout is any indication, our working class residents have forgotten how hard it was before and how long it took to get the progressive majority on the council that we enjoy today. Our community must stand together in the November general election to protect our hard-fought majority council. We need five. Or I fear our community will instead be forced to stand together in the chambers and watch helplessly as votes favor industry special interests once more. They say anything worth doing takes time to accomplish, but that timeline is stretched much longer without the votes to represent you. We must remember our past in order to secure our future. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. We remember. We remember. I remember. I don't remember, but I know I was there. I remember. I remember. Before we gained council majority, only two short years ago, our community was regularly distressed by a constant barrage of harmful policy decisions by the council, which consistently favored visitor, real estate, and development special interest groups above environmental health and resident quality of life usually under the long-time false promise of local jobs for the working class and housing that never came. The same familiar narrative is being used this campaign season. Maka'ala. During council deliberations, industry talking points were brazenly recycled at nauseam, project after project, day after day, without shame for the palpable baselessness that sucked all the air out of the bright blue carpeted room as the then majority regularly ruled against its community with blatant disregard in favor of special interests. Wall-to-wall -wall testifiers watched with dismay. Stomachs sank, throats felt punched, tears welled in the eyes. Our people were tired. As memory serves, until 2019, there have only been seven elected officials to carry the dependable vote torch as the voice of the people. Seven, total, in nearly 40 years. In 1981, there was one, alone, Wayne Nishiki. You know, you would show up to work every day and give it everything you got because there are people relying on you, pounding on you to fight for them. Even if it can't get to, they would know you fought are trying. You would never ever give up. For over a decade, 1981 to 1993, member Nishiki was the sole representation for our working class families. He fought hard on the floor to bring forth a different point of view than was being characterized, to deliberate another side to the issues discussed. He knew he would never have the votes, but he did it anyway because he wanted the community to know they were heard. He was with them, and he wasn't afraid to speak up on their behalf. He was the resident hero for a total of 26 years of public service. In 1995, Wayne returned after a two-year break, but this time he had help on the council. Saul and Wayne together provided advocacy and hope for the community for cultural preservation, environmental protection, affordable housing, water rights, integrity in decision-making. Exhausted yet empowered, the public never gave up. Even with the eyes stacked against them, they showed up and testified. And so it went, term after term, never having more than two or three members to carry the vote at a time. Wayne Nishiki and Joanne Johnson, 1999 to 2004. Joanne Johnson and Michelle Anderson, 2005 to 2008. Wayne Nishiki, Joanne Johnson, Saul Kohohalahala, 2009 to 2010. Ellie Cochran, 2011 to 2016. Ellie Cochran, Kelly King, Alika Atai, 2017 to 2018. Labeled troublemakers, rabble rousers, and divisive, their thorn in the side of industry and long-standing political stranglehold networks behavior did not come without risk, intimidation, and smear campaigns. Wayne Nishiki and his young family were forced to flee their home and live out of their vehicle after a hit was ordered on him. Saul Koho'ohalahala was condemned in the media, reputation smeared, and was ultimately removed from office for residency requirement accusations. Joanne Johnson received threats that drugs could easily be planted in her vehicle and her reputation destroyed. Michelle Anderson had her mailbox tampered with on a regular basis. Ellie Cochran's life was threatened, her reputation 
dragged in the media. Alika Atai's official county email account was blocked and his character tarnished in the media. These seven members held decades-long difficult and valuable space for us, sacrificed for us, and paved the way for the GMO moratorium and Huli 2018 movements, which ultimately amplified our voices, elevated our issues, and gained us the majority council we enjoy today. As recently as four years ago, the daily political reality for our residents and minority council members was a frustrating, arduous journey to get anything legislatively accomplished on behalf of the working class public, which took an extreme toll on families, individuals, Aina, and Hawaiians for decades upon decades, irreversible harm and desecration to countless sacred places, adding to inherent generational trauma. Concerned residents were forced to choose between earning income or losing things that mattered most to them on a regular basis for the three-minute chance to accept express their objections. That meeting primarily saw Councilmember Anderson valiantly attempting to attach meaningful language to conditions previously agreed upon four years ago. She had success in inserting specifics about cultural inventory surveys and preservation plans, following applicable water rules, near shore water quality monitoring, and other concerns. Perhaps no member in the history of Maui County worked to add such protections with so much bold, persistent commitment than former Councilmember Michelle Anderson. It was not unusual that her efforts to secure conditions would last well into the evening, surrounded by countless resource binders stacked both in front and behind her. Unlimited recesses were called so Councilmember Anderson could sidebar with developers where she would fashion conditional language and advance their support, all while the rest of her colleagues waited. With a commanding, intelligent temperament, Michelle Anderson never tired. She chewed away at the correct resolute until she and the public could swallow the result and that meant her counterparts would walk over broken glass to cast their votes until she was good and ready. Michelle's legacy for protecting water as a public trust resource lives on today through the groundbreaking Show Me the Water Bill, which required developers to prove water source and capacity before project approval could be obtained, adding an important layer of regulation to slow the negative impact that the previous avalanche of luxury and unattainable housing was having on Kalo farmers, Kuleana landowners, and existing residential neighborhoods. In her time, she championed efforts to protect Native Hawaiian rights, including East Maui stream restoration, the designation of Naweha as a surface water management area, and introduced legislation assuring Native Hawaiians entitlements to water. At a time when it was politically and socially unpopular, she advocated for the public interest and sought deeper understanding of the factual context in which council decisions took place. Upon his return to the council in 2009, Councilmember Wayne Nishiki began permanently displaying a miniature upside-down Hawaiian flag on his desk in the council chambers to show support for the Hawaii Supreme Court's decision to block the sale of 1.2 million acres of ceded land. Nishiki explained publicly that the flag's placement was set there to remind himself and his colleagues during important decision-making of the cultural genocide of the Hawaiian people. Only two members bared the brunt and the sole kuleana as the reliable, unwavering voice of the people alone, Wayne Nishiki and Ellie Cochran. Standing as sole dissenters, these members remain strong in their convictions no matter how embarrassing or difficult the meetings and countless uncomfortable moments were. They raised their fingers, spoke up anyway, and made motions that would likely never receive a second. Forced to endure sitting in the inevitable awkward silences that follow receiving no second, they lifted themselves up by their bootstraps, leaned through the disappointment drenched moments and continued. This went on for 12 and 6 years respectively. Still, they remain steadfast in their duty to represent the people's voice for the record. You can't just sit back and let others rule the show or run the, you know, run it. I had to step in and, and and, step, and speak out because no one was speaking on behalf of our aina, our culture, you know, all the kono things that we all cherish and love and want to protect. No one was doing that. It was all about pave it over, sell it out, exploit it, whatever, and that was wrong. I, so again, soul vote, only one saying it, only one walking the talk, and then yay, Alika comes in and, and you know, and others stepped up and I was like, finally, I'm having a little bit of help. We were never the majority, 
um, like it is today. And I think that's why we need to get the message out to let let's not regress back to those times because it was it was not fun. Like I said, it was a struggle. And you know, I it's it is it's hard to look back on it because it's um, it, you went through a lot. So a lot of times I wanted to throw in the towel, you know, and just give it up. But I thought, well, who's going to be here to stand up for what? For the things that I've been standing up for, there was nobody. And I just couldn't walk away and turn my back on that. Ellie Cochran, a black belt in Taekwondo, fought with as much focus and intention to pass serious legislation in the face of extreme council adversity. Supported by an incredible force of community backing, she introduced legislation to prohibit the sale and use of sunscreen containing oxybenzone and oxynoxate, passed a bill banning polystyrene, passed a bill to require an expert on Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices on each planning commission, introduced a bill to create a special management area revolving fund to support beach access and solutions to sea level rise and erosion secured funding for services to assist in better enforcement of short-term rental regulations, spearheaded a pesticide-free parks pilot program, passed a moratorium on sand mining in Waiale, and introduced a bill that would have required mandatory restricted-use pesticide and GMO disclosure requirements in buffer zones for commercial agricultural entities. The council received testimony from more than 100 testifiers over two days, including more than 80 testifiers from the council's Molokai office, setting the stage for the historic 2014 GMO moratorium ballot initiative. Ellie Cochran was the only I vote as the landmark draft legislation failed miserably at the council level, triggering the public outrage wheels in motion for a resident-driven ballot initiative proposal, the only way to bypass the council's decision-making authority. I've been a community servant leader for well over 35 years, primarily serving the, the youth of Maui. My aloha from Maui has been well established. Then came the calling in 2013 and 2014 to be involved in the election regarding the genetic engineering and GMO and pesticides. As a steward of the land, I saw it as a duty back then to step forward, to be one of the leaders of our community, to say, enough already. Enough already with the poisoning of our island, enough with the chemical cocktailing of our land and the tainting of our water resources. That led to the Citizens Initiative ballot, which led to a victory in 2014. And that kept me involved to the 2016 election to run for political office. Everything we were saying that was bad for the health of our children and the Aina has been proven true.
Joining incumbent Kelly King, we had gained three more progressive voices on the council, inching only one vote away from a majority. We were very clear as candidates that this was our vision and priority. Winning the election was evidence that it was also the community's vision and priority. In 2017, our council minority had gone from one to three with Eli, Kelly, and Alika, but it still was the minority. After putting their faith in the 2014 ballot initiative that we won, the county refused to enforce it and made our community feel betrayed. They lost confidence in the process and felt that their vote must not matter. The Huli 2018 movement was a community-driven effort to restore that faith in people power again, to convince our community that their vote indeed mattered. As a result of that renewed energy, we were able to gain Tamara, Shane, and myself, but we had also lost Alika and Ellie had lost the mayoral race. We were only one member away from realizing the goal. We knew that Maui was headed into an unsustainable future and so we quickly had to steer this va'a into a more sustainable direction, especially for our keiki. For the first time in county history, the progressive working class community had gained five votes on the council, and suddenly, true legislative progress was being made at breakneck speed. Testifiers stopped needing to show up as often and could trust that their majority were working hard to represent them each and every day. Once we secured a majority on the council, we were able to pass important legislation. We created the first ever Department of Agriculture to boost food security on the island, and also to invest in important agriculture infrastructure. We were able to work together to help mitigate over tourism before it trampled us further with the policy proposals to cap visitor accommodations along with several other corrective steps. We've been able to advance creative policy proposals to address the ongoing affordable housing crisis because past practices were not giving us the housing we need to shelter our people. We were able to pass environmentally friendly legislation to stop the sale of styrofoam boogie boards and chemical sunscreens, which were harming our reef and needlessly filling our landfills. In four short years, only two of which had a true council majority, this is only a snapshot of all that's been accomplished. Passed legislation giving preference to long-term residents for affordable housing lotteries. Funded a new division under the Department of Housing and Human Concerns to prioritize housing solutions. Increased the Affordable Housing Fund to expedite affordable housing opportunities. Passed Bill 107 lowering the cost of all new affordable homes by 20%. Funded an increase in substance abuse and behavioral health services for the houseless. Funded a Kupuna Care Center on the island of Lanai. Passed legislation creating property tax tiers to give tax relief to local homeowners while increasing taxes on second homes and short-term rentals, passed legislation incentivizing long-term rentals for residents over short-term accommodations, passed Aina Kupuna legislation to stop the pricing out of generational families from their ancestral land, funded the first ever climate change and sea level rise resiliency plan, created a commission on healing solutions for homelessness, banned short-term rentals for Molokai, passed a moratorium on new tourism accommodations and proposed a bill to cap tourist accommodations in all zoning districts, spearheaded the council and committee meetings from in-person to online passed legislation that resulted in the creation of the new Department of Agriculture, passed legislation to prohibit single-use plastic utensils and food containers, passed legislation to prohibit chemical pesticides and fertilizers in county parks, created a county archaeologist position to protect our natural, cultural, and historical resources, introduced the establishment of the Maui Nui Community Water Systems Authority that will be on November's ballot, passed legislation that eliminated commercial ocean activity at Hanaka'o, funded the creation of the West Maui Green Cycle Commercial Composting Facility Pilot, 
project. Funded the acquisition of 50 acres in West Maui for future parks. Reduced the height limit in the Pili Bay Civic Improvement District and eliminated hotel transient usage. Passed the West Maui Community Plan update, the first one in a quarter of a century. Introduced and passed legislation prohibiting the sale and distribution of non-mineral sunscreen. Funded a mobile hygiene unit for South Maui. Introduced a bill to allow safe overnight parking for the unsheltered. Passed a bill to support wetland restoration projects. Created the South Maui Advisory Committee. It's time for our community to activate and engage once more in this critical upcoming November general election. We have a responsibility to protect our hard-fought majority on the council. If we don't resolve to vote now, we will certainly suffer the consequences later. Join us in November. We are Onipa'a 2022.